Hello students. Welcome to Dr. Savita Goel's English classes. Today we'll discuss the poem The Solitary Reaper written by William Wordsworth. Before I begin with the explanation of the poem, a few words about William Wordsworth. He was born at Cockermouth, England in 1770. As a child, he enjoyed roaming among the fields of his beloved countryside in the lap of nature. He was sent to St John's College, Cambridge in 1787. then he went to france the great events in france especially the french revolution left a deep imprint on his mind he owes his deep love for democracy for liberty fraternity and equality to this great revolution he returned from france in 1972 He received the honor of poet laureate in 1843 he passed away in 1850 His profound love for nature and his attitude to nature distinguishes him from other poets while other poets have expressed the external beauty of nature wordsworth goes deeper and finds a spirit a soul a life in nature a critic said that wordsworth had passion for nature fixed in his blood it was a necessity of his being like that of a mulberry leaf to silk worm and through his communication with nature he loved and breathed for wordsworth there is something in the rare mountain air the sound of wind and waters he is deeply touched by tranquility the solemn outlines of the hills and the mountains and the common countryside scenes everything in nature its simplicity its beauty passed into wordsworth's poetry as its breath and being apart from his belief in the spiritual power of nature he was deeply interested in the common rustic folk he had a strong conviction in the fact that in these simple folks the elemental passions and human feelings are at their purest and most intense because they live in the lap of nature and are uncorrupted by the influence of city life this poem the solitary reaper was written in 1807 and it was uh, inspired not by an actual sight but by the description of a solitary reaper given in Thomas Wilkinson's tour in Scotland. Now, uh, I'll read out the first stanza of the poem, and then I'll explain it. The first stanza of the poem is: "Behold her, single in the field, yon solitary Highland lass." reaping and singing by herself stop here or gently pass alone she cuts and binds the grain and sings a melancholy strain oh listen 
for the veil profound is overflowing with the sound now in the first stanza the word behold means to see yon means yonder distant far off solitary means single alone las i'm sure you all, you all of you know las means a girl melancholy means sad or wistful and veil profound means a deep valley in the first stanza the poet addresses a passer by and says look at the highland girl who is all alone in the field and harvesting the crop and singing all by herself she is lost in her own world the poet further says that if the passer by wants to listen to the song of the girl he should stop there or quietly pass from there without disturbing her the girl is reaping the crop and trying the tying the grain into sheaves or bundles all alone the poet says that the girl is singing a sad song and the entire deep valley is reverberating or echoing with the sweet melodious but mournful song of the girl now i'll read second stanza of the poem no nightingale did ever chant more welcome notes to weary bands of travelers in some shady haunt among arabian sands a voice so thrilling never was heard in springtime from the cuckoo bird breaking the silence of the seas among the farthest hebrides now in this stanza shady haunt means an oasis that is a shady fertile place in a desert where there is some water and trees and hebrides are the islands on the west coast of scotland in this second stanza the poet compares the song of the reaper with the song of a nightingale or a cuckoo bird and asserts that the song of the girl surpasses the song of these two birds known for the sweet music now students just imagine if a group of travelers has been traveling in the desert for a very long time these travelers are feeling extremely exhausted and suddenly they see an oasis they relax there and the so song of the nightingale sounds very pleasant very soothing to the ears and they feel ecstatic however the poet says that the song of the solitary reaper is sweeter than the song of this nightingale the poet then says that the girl's song is more thrilling more enticing more enthralling then the song of the cuckoo bird who is heard during the silent uh during uh, the silence of the spring season in the remote islands of hebrides now i'll read stanza number 3 of the poem it is will no one tell me what she sings perhaps the plaintive numbers flow 
for old unhappy far off things and battles long ago or is it some humble lay familiar matter of today some natural sorrow loss or pain that has been and may be again in this stanza the word plaintive means sad mournful or wistful uh as the girl is singing in a different dialect that is gaelic the poet does not comprehend the meaning of the song of the girl in the third stanza the poet tries to guess the theme of the song of the girl he says that perhaps the wistful song of the girl is about some tragic incidents that occurred in the past or it is about some wars fought long time back or it is an ordinary song about the day to day routine matters of life or maybe it is a song about some natural pains or sufferings that a person endures that has happened in the past or may occur in the future now the last stanza of the poem is i'll read the last stanza whatever the theme the maiden sang as if her song could have no ending i saw her singing at her work and over the sickle bending i listened motionless and still and as i mounted up the hill the music in my heart i bore long after it was heard no more in this stanza that is the last stanza the poet says whatever might have been the subject matter of girl's song it appeared that the sweet song of the girl is endless she would go on singing forever the girl was incessantly singing as she was harvesting the crop with her sickle the poet listened to the song of the girl with rapt attention without stirring without moving however when he climbed the hill he could no longer physically hear the an enrapturing song of the girl but the melodious music of the song of the girl kept on reverberating in his ears uh in this poem yes in this poem the poet idealizes the lonely scottish girl and her song he thinks that her song is better than the song of the nightingale or a cuckoo the poet is greatly impressed by the sadness and the wistfulness of the song that he hears and feels that it has created an unforgettable impression upon his mind wordsworth here strikes a democratic note so far as the theme of this poem is concerned he chooses a simple familiar 
peasant girl as the subject of his poem there is something uh, new in this poem something new in english poetry because in the 18th century the poets were mainly concerned with town life and the people of the town they never wrote about the common man wordsworth who is a democrat and who believes in the equality of man makes a simple scottish maiden the subject of his poem in his own words he quote chooses incidents from humble and common life as themes of his poems unquote the central idea in the poem is that the song of a lonely scottish girl is more thrilling than that of a nightingale or a cuckoo bird further that it has such haunting melody such enticing music about it that it continues to reverberate in his ears again and again long after it is heard no more this poem illustrates wordsworth's theory of poetry this poem very amply illustrates wordsworth's theory that poetry is emotions recollected in tranquility he and his sister dorothy had actually come across several such reapers singing while at work in remote parts of the highlands of scotland while touring there Uh, this poem the solitary reaper is one of the finest lyrics of wordsworth a poem which is more a vision than a piece of meditation as the reaper is singing in gaelic dialect the poet does not know what she is singing about but he is thrilled by the haunting melody of her song his imagination is set at work so that it travels in space to the far off arabian sands to the farthest hebrides in order to collect similes that would render the thrilling quality of the girl's song uh in this poem the diction is very simple and pure the music has a magical haunting quality the enchantment of the song of the reaper herself the poet makes us feel what he himself felt we enter into the psyche of the poet and we exactly feel what william wordsworth feels okay this is all for today